we have already seen several examples where we could make multiple choices for a basis of subspace. In practice, the idea is of course to choose the basis which is most suitable for your underlying problem. And this needs definitely not be the standard basis. If your problem has some different symmetry, another basis may work better, a basis which exploits this symmetry. But how to work with such a basis? We want to do computations using this other basis. The very least we need to be able to is to express arbitrary factors in terms of our new basis. This is done using so-called coordinate factors. In this video we will learn what coordinate factors are and we'll see what it's, this means when we take the standard basis. So let's have a look. Suppose we have a subspace W and a factor X in the subspace W and the basis we want to be in, the basis for W. Then we know that we can express the factor x in terms of b1 up to bn with weights c1 up to cn. Now we call those weights c1 up to cn, we can put those weights in a new vector, of course they are just numbers so we can put them in a factor, and we call this new vector the coordinate factor of x with respect to the basis b. Now two questions. Can we do this for any factor x in W and can we do it in only one way? Well, can we do it for any x in W? Well, yes, W is a span of B1 to Bn because uh, this is a basis for W. And since x is in W, x is in the span, so that means that x is in the new combination of B1 to Bn, so you can express x in this way, for any x. So yes, you can always do this. You can always find a factor like this. Second question, can you do it in only one way? Well, if you want to prove you can do something in only one way, it's often good to assume you do it in two different ways and show that you come to some contradiction. So let's try to do it in two different ways. We use weights c1 to cn and we use weights d1 up to dn. So we express x in two different ways in terms of b1 up to pn. So what do we do? We subtract to 2, x minus x equals 0, and we have a bn, b1 times c1 minus d1, etc. up to cn minus dn times bn. But now we have an equation of the form scalar times b1, plus scalar times b2, plus scalar times b3, etc. up to scalar times bn equals zero. But the set b1 up to bn is a basis, so it's independent. So this equation uh, has only the trivial solution. So we need c1 minus d1 equals zero, etc., etc., etc. So c1 equals d1, c2 equals d2, up to cn equals dn. So all weights are the same. Uh, so, indeed, we can do this in only one way. If we try to do it in another way, we find that the second way is actually exactly the same as the first way. Let's look at an example where we take the standard basis for R2, E1, E2. What do coordinate factors mean then? So it's a basis consisting of 1, 0 and 0, 1. Let's take some x, say 3, 4. Then I know x equals 3 times 1, 0 plus 4 times 0, 1. So our, according to our definition, the coordinate factor of x with respect to e, basis e, is the factor consisting of the weights in front of the two basis factors. So it's the factor consisting of 3 and 4. But that's exactly as our original x was. So we see that if we take the standard basis, then the notion of a coordinate factor with respect to the standard basis corresponds to the notion of a coordinate factor we already had. So coordinate factors are just a generalization of what we already knew. For the standard basis, it, come back, it comes back to the original coordinate factors. And if you have other bases, okay, then you have to start to do computations. 
course, curious to see what happens if you have other bases. We'll see that in another video.